Hi everyone, just going back to my previous video, I discussed mortality rates between wild versus captive macaques, highlighting the fact that the current data may be skewed slightly due to the inability to ethically study the lives of social media pet monkeys. However, as one viewer very interestingly pointed out that, well, we can actually draw parallels between the early and very famous experimental studies on rhesus macaques conducted by Harry Harlow, mainly in the 50s and 60s. Yes, experiments where the stringent research ethics boards we have in existence today didn't really exist back when Harlow's main experiments took place. Now, of course, Harlow's methods were conducted in a laboratory in the name of research, whereas social media pet monkey channels are not set in such controlled conditions and are, well, they're performed for entertainment rather than for research. Despite these differences, though, we can still draw many parallels between Harlow's experiments and the videos we see on social media of these monkeys. And I think Harlow's findings, I think they can serve as a warning about the long-term harm that can result from disrupting these monkeys natural social bonds and, and their instincts. So applying Harlow's insights to the present day exploitation of baby monkeys we see on social media can highlight the dangers these animals are, are faced with. Very briefly then, Harry Harlow was an experimental psychologist who was perhaps most famous for his research on maternal deprivation and isolation in rhesus macaques, like I said, largely being conducted in the 50s and 60s. Harlow became fascinated with the concept of love and its importance in emotional development. Now, the psychologists that were already established at that time, they largely dismissed the role of affection and emotional bonds. Instead, they focused on biological needs, so food, for example. But Harlow wanted to challenge these rather limited views by studying maternal bonds in rhesus macaques because he wanted to see how love, comfort and emotional security would affect the infant's development. So Harlow's earlier research methods included separating infant macaques from their biological mothers shortly after birth and placing the infants in cages with two surrogate mothers one surrogate was made of this like wire mesh and dispensed food, while the other surrogate was covered in soft cloth, but this one didn't, did not offer any food. So from these earlier studies, the findings were described as showing the importance of emotional bonds in development. Harlow's research showed that infant monkeys formed a strong attachment to soft, comforting surrogate mothers, even when those surrogates provided no food. And so Harlow interpreted these findings to suggest that the need for comfort and emotional security outweighed basic physiological needs like food in the formation of attachment bonds. He later conducted his total isolation in monkey studies where he varied the extent to which he would keep infant monkeys totally isolated from any kind of contact whatsoever because he wanted to study the effects of extreme isolation on the, the monkey's emotional health. So this involved isolating the monkeys for differing time periods. So one group of monkeys would be isolated for three months, another group for six months and another group for 12 months. After the periods of isolation were over, Harlow reported that many of the monkeys now became withdrawn. So they stopped grooming and exhibited signs of emotional distress, extreme emotional distress, and common signs such as rocking and self-harm. The monkeys were also unable to reintegrate into normal social environments and they revealed long-term psychological damage, including social withdrawal, um, an inability to bond with others, and including violent outbursts. And not surprisingly, the monkeys who were isolated for the longest period were found to be more affected by the isolation, specifically in terms of their social skills. 
Harlow used his experiments to highlight the devastating effects of isolation and maternal deprivation. And indeed, his findings were very useful to psychologists, particularly those studying attachment theories. But obviously, Harlow's research methods have since been widely condemned for their extreme cruelty, and they are now regarded as some of the most unethical experiments in psychological research history. I mean, even back then at the time, many of Harlow's own colleagues were voicing concerns about his methods. So you're probably sitting there thinking, well, how can you possibly compare these cruel scientific laboratory experiments to social media exploited monkeys in residential human settings? Well, I suppose we can't rigorously compare the two, obviously, because of the variability in conditions. But I do believe it's fair to say that despite these different settings, we can still draw many parallels between Harlow's experiments and social media monkeys. In Harlow's experiments, infant macaques were forcibly separated from their mothers shortly after being born, so we could study the effects of maternal deprivation. And as discussed, these infants were placed with surrogate mothers but were denied any real maternal interaction. On social media channels, infant macaques, they're also often taken from their mothers at an extremely young age. Um, so like Harlow's monkeys, these infants are also deprived of essential social and emotional development, which would normally be fostered through fostered through interactions with their real mothers and other members of their species group, of course. A second comparison we can make relates to the isolation and lack of socialisation. In some of Harlow's later experiments, infant macaques were kept in complete isolation for quite long periods of time, depriving them of any social interaction. These monkeys, they develop severe behavioural problems, as I've already discussed, including self-harm, anxiety and an ability to interact with other monkeys when they were later exposed to social environments. And the extreme isolation did lead, lead to emotional trauma and abnormal psychological development. Social media pet monkeys are also often kept in isolation from their own species. Although they may be physically closer to their human owners, they are deprived of the crucial social interactions that occur naturally in the wild macaque groups, such as grooming, foraging, social play, and learning important lessons relating to social hierarchies. So like Harlow's isolated monkeys, these pet macaques, we have seen them develop abnormal behaviours such as aggression, dependency on humans and stereotypic, beha stereotypic behaviours or repetitive movements. So while their isolation is less obvious than in the previous lab settings, the absence of natural social experiences leads to it leads to similar psychological consequences. So now let's look at the attachment to the surrogate mother figures. One of Harlow's famous experiments, as I've already discussed, involved giving infant macaques a choice between two surrogate mothers. One made of wire that provided food and another covered in soft cloth that provided the comfort. The monkeys consistently chose the cloth mother for emotional security even when it didn't offer food. So Harlow concluded that emotional comfort was very important, just like physical needs in early development. But the, the experiment highlighted the stress caused by the lack of a real nurturing maternal figure. Pet monkeys on social media often bond with their humans in a way that mimics the attachment to the surrogate figures seen in Harlow's monkeys. So the way they clung to their cloth mothers. The monkeys may rely on humans for comfort and security, but again, this relationship is unnatural. We know human owners can't provide the same social or emotional learning that a macaque mother can. And as a result, these, these pet monkeys often display clingy or dependent behaviours. And this 
clinging reflects the infant's fear and their longing for attachment after being separated from their mothers, rather than what many viewers interpret as being a genuine sign of contentment or happiness. And then there is exploitation for personal gain. So Harlow's experiments were driven by scientific curiosity. Well, I think it is also understood that Harlow did have some personal interests as well. But scientific curiosity and the desire to understand attachment. But he did so at the expense of the monkey's psychological well-being. So his work is now widely condemned for prioritising scientific outcomes over animal welfare with little regard for the ethical implications of the distress inflicted on these monkeys. Whereas pet monkey channels are often exploiting monkeys for profit and entertainment and the monkey's welfare is secondary to the goal of creating entertaining content. So just as Harlow's experiments were criticised for causing unnecessary suffering, pet monkey channels exploit these animals for human gain, often without proper regard for their emotional or psychological health, and therefore they are also causing unnecessary suffering for these monkeys. Oh no, and there's more, because then there is the manipulation of natural behaviours. By depriving the monkeys of normal maternal care and social interaction, Harlow's experiments severely distorted their natural behaviours. The monkeys became withdrawn, fearful or overly aggressive. Um, their developmental trajectories were, they were deeply altered. So similarly, social media pet monkeys are often trained and encouraged to perform unnatural behaviours such as wearing clothes, eating human food, or just engaging in human-like activities. And these actions, they also distort their natural behaviours and development, again, making them comparable to Harlow's experiments. And the overall result is, you know, you have an animal that behaves in ways that are just far removed how they would act in the wild, leading to long-term psychological damage. And so Harlow's research, well, it, it did demonstrate the negative effects of maternal deprivation and isolation on these macaques. Long-term consequences such as severe emotional distress, abnormal social behaviours and difficulty forming healthy relationships. In both Harlow's laboratory and social media pet channels, pet monkey channels, we have already seen similar behavioural signs of infants showing anxiety, clinging and rocking behaviours, self-soothing motions and self-harm, all of which signal the psychological trauma from being subjected to such unnatural environments. Okay, now obviously people generally have no problem accepting that Harlow's experiments were unethical and just cruel and they would not want to see these methods being used again. Yet, despite this, many people have a much harder time accepting that these social media pet monkey channels are actually unethical and cruel. And I think there are indeed, there are several reasons for why some might condemn Harlow's experiments while failing to see the exploitation of pet monkeys in a similar way. And probably likely because this manipulation hides behind the guise of entertainment, making it harder to recognise the harm being caused to these monkeys. But let's try and look into this a bit further. In Harlow's research, the ethical violations, well, they were obvious because the experimental methods directly inflicted psychological harm. I mean, Harlow even gave his apparatus and procedures horrifying names such as the Tunnel of Terror and the Pit of Despair. So we could easily see how cruel his methods were. Whereas the harm inflicted on social media monkeys is more subtle or obscured. 
the suffering these monkeys endure is much harder to spot because the content is cleverly edited to emphasise cute and loving moments, such as dressing monkeys in baby clothes, feeding them baby bottles or engaging them in playful interactions. So all of this masks the psychological harm. So the channel or monkey owners, they may remove, or they do, I know they do remove, or downplay moments where the monkeys show distress or frustration and they just emphasize behaviors that appear that appear to be cute or endearing and they take out the more troubling signs of the animal's well-being such as the repetitive behaviors aggression and signs of stress because harlow's methods were not hiding the deliberate acts of cruelty it is relatively easy for the public and scientists to condemn them Whereas social media monkey owners frame their relationships with monkeys as being an affectionate and nurturing ones, which make it difficult for us to recognise the harm being caused to the monkeys. So the monkeys are usually treated like human children and, like I say, their distress is often disguised by framing behaviours such as clinginess or dependence on, on being signs of affection. And so these so these constant fake narratives, they can make us wrongly believe that the monkeys are well cared for and that any potential harm is minimal or it may be accidental rather than systematic like in Harlow's research. And then, of course, there is that all important emotional connection to these monkeys. So many loving viewers feel a personal connection with with these pet monkeys that they see on social media and they often view them as cute and, and entertaining and, and this emotional attachment it can cloud ability to critically assess the harm being done to the animals in, and in contrast to this Harlow's experiments they're easier to judge more objectively because they are framed as scientific research without that emotional entertainment factor so viewers often project human emotions and experiences onto these monkeys, thinking that animals enjoy being in the spotlight or that they are genuinely loved and cared for properly by, th by these owners. And this anthropomorphism, it can lead fans to believe that the relationship is a positive one rather than just an exploitative one. Whereas Harlow's experiments are, well, they're seen as just cold and detached. And I think it's almost, it's become normalised, too normalised now, keeping these wild monkeys as pets and bringing them up like human children. Um, and I think I'm actually going to do a separate video on this. So whether or not the residential settings of social media monkeys appear less controlled than Harlow's experiments. You can't really deny that the damage these monkeys endure doesn't reflect the same ethical concerns that Harlow's work is still famous for. And I see no reason for why we can't use Harlow's findings as a cautionary lens through which we can view exploited pet macaques on social media. And as usual, there is still plenty more to say but I don't like to make these videos too long, so I'm going to leave this here. But can I just say again, thank you to everyone who has contributed to this discussion so far and for your inspirational ideas. I couldn't put all this stuff together without you all. So once again, thank you. And I do hope to chat to you all again soon.